So let's check out the latest long-term supported release of Linux Mint. What's up guys, it's Josh back with another video. And we have an awesome distro that I want to take a look at today. And I've been making videos for a very long time about different distributions, you know, Linux in general, as well as applications. And I always pointed to Linux Mint as one of those entry level style distros that I recommend to new people that want to get into the Linux operating system. And so the long awaited Linux Mint 21.2 Victoria has finally arrived and I'm super excited to share its latest features and improvements with you all. And like I've always said, Linux Mint continues to deliver a very polished and user-centric experience. And this latest version takes things to a whole new level. So let's go down and hop over to my virtual machine and I can walk you guys through the installation as well as check out some of the new features that are included in this fantastic release. So let's get started. All right, so I'm at linuxmint.com. This is where you can get the ISO from. And as you can see, there's information about Linux Mint. So if you need installation instruction, this is how you download it. Like I said, you can select what desktop edition you want. So they have Cinnamon. Cinnamon is their flagship, if you guys didn't know. Uh, Mate and then XFCE, which is my favorite. But we're going to stick with Cinnamon as the edition we're going to download and install today just show you guys the newest version but like i said there's installation instructions if you click down in here and downloads and i just wanted to show you guys here are the mirrors so you can go through download this latest version of linux mint and then also if you go under links you'll find their blog and this will bring up all the articles they put out and as you can see this is one right here just walking through how to upgrade to linux mint 21.2 and then down below and this was released uh july 16th the long-term supported release was released on that day and here are the notes the new features you know all that good stuff the recommendations systems recommendations so you need two gigs of ram preferably four gigs, you know, to have comfortable uses, 20 gigabyte hard drive, you know, and 1024 by 768 resolution for the screen. And if you installed the beta, cause they did have a beta release, uh, then all you had to do is run the updates and you'll get the latest version if you want to. And I'm sure you probably already know that. So let's go down and hop over to my virtual machine. We can get this thing installed. All right, so I'm booted into the live ISO. And it's very simple to install. I'm gonna work you guys through it right fast, but all you have to do is click on this link on the desktop. It says install Linux Mint, and this will go through the install. And boom, there we go. And as you can see, it looks pretty familiar. Uh, Ubuntu, right? <laughs> so like I said, uh, Linux Mint is based on Ubuntu. And so since Ubuntu released their long-term supported release, the 22.04, uh, it takes them a little while to go on and release their version of it as Linux Mint. And so let's go through the install. As you can see, it's super simple, super easy. We'll run, run through it. But that was the language, then our keyboard layout. So I'm using English, just select yours. You can install the multimedia codex if you need to. I'm gonna go down and do it just cause. And then right here, it's just basically setting up your drives. So this is the partitioning section. So you can erase the disk and install Linux Mint. They have some advanced features. So if you click under here, you can go, you can set up LVM, which is logical volumes uh, with your new Linux installation, or you can erase this and use ZFS if you want to. I'm just hitting no. Uh, if you go right here to LVM, that'll open it up so you can encrypt your Linux distro. And we're not gonna do that today. I'm gonna just go back to none, press okay, boom, and hit install now. And then it'll select our, we'll be able to select our location and then also set up our account. So I'm on the West Coast, boom, Los Angeles, hit continue. Uh, set up our account, so Josh, and then I'll name this Mint21, and then use that username, so Josh, and then set our password, and then require my password on login, I always do that. And then also another feature, you can encrypt your home directory. So, and that'll, it'll encrypt it based on your password that you set use to set up your account so when you log into the system it'll decrypt your home directory that's a great security feature as well you can set up so let's go down here continue and i'll be back when this actually finishes 
All right, so the installation is complete and all we have to do is hit restart now. Now you can continue testing your system if you want to, but the system is installed and all you have to do is restart from there. So let's go down and hit the restart now button and let's go through the desktop. All right, so we logged into the fresh installation of Linux Mint and here's the welcome page right here. You can turn it off, you know, so it won't show up on startup every single time but it says welcome to your new operating system this welcome stream this welcome screen will guide you through the first steps show you how to find help and where to get more information so let's go boom i'll do that and one of the things i wanted to show you guys this is kind of like one of the new features is they have a global dark theme that you get you know assigned to the system and it'll go through and do everything dark so uh, that's one thing i heard that was super cool you know before it was mixed um now let's see the style they do have different styles so you could change that up if you want to um i'm gonna go back to Y though i like Y. but the dark theme super dope you can change the colors up boom make it look cool i'm not gonna mess around with it too much uh, but that'll change all the accents as you can see like under here uh well let's go back here and you can see it see see the red right there it changed it up so that's super cool we can go right up in here i like this one uh with the dork like a blue that looks super cool but as you can see you can change up the themes that's one of the new features you know included with that global dark theme so it basically changes everything uh dork and then a couple other things you can set up uh, your snapshots. I think I covered this in previous videos, but you could go down and set up your backup system. It's, it's kind of like a snapshot that you can set where it can take like daily snatch snapshots. And so if you like break something on the machine or if the machine need, uh, needs to be restored, you can do that from a previous working state. And then we got the driver manager and I go over here, just show you guys and it kind of went past it, but we can launch this. And so if you got any hardware on your system it'll try to find those drivers for you and get them installed it uh even looks for proprietary drivers uh i'm gonna close it it's gonna look there's nothing on here because it's a virtual machine so it really doesn't matter now the update manager boom let's go down uh open that up and i really like the update manager on here uh it is super cool it's super easy to use uh and that's why i recommend this for new people and one of the things you could do is uh, if you switch to a local mirror, you can switch to a local mirror. That way you can get the packages faster, uh, but we're not going to mess with any of that. You can refresh. Uh, it'll find updates for the system. As you can see, there is a new version of the update manager available, so you can apply that update. I'm not going to apply it, but what I typically like to do is show people go down and get familiar with the a terminal you could bring all your updates on the system right here in the terminal and let me run one command right fast uh just to give you guys uh some information about the system because this is one of the changes as well it comes with linux mint 5 where well, it comes with kernel 5.15 as a default kernel so we can exit out of that boom and then you got your system settings uh and cinnamon is super simple to use man uh if you use xfce cinnamon is pretty much the same looks pretty much the same in my opinion as far as the settings go it's not that difficult to actually use but let's go down and close that and then let's go to the software manager now like i said this is one of the changes as well they've added to this release of linux mint the interface has been updated and it also features flat packs and also, if you look in here under the software manager and you start looking at different software that you want to see, like, for instance, uh, let's just go anywhere. Uh, one of the things I saw um, is the rating system that they put on here. It's a little bit more improved. As you can see, it looks a little different. You can click right here. You can look at the reviews, look at the details right there. Just information about the software and then the reviews. So that's a change I've seen. And so let's go down and close that. I just wanted to show you guys that. And then the firewall, you know, that's one of the things you actually want to set up in the beginning as well. Like if this is a brand new system for you, uh, you always want to turn on your firewall. Most of these systems don't have a firewall turned on or most of these distros, they don't come with the firewall turned on. So you want to go down and do it. Even Ubuntu does the same thing. They don't have the firewall turned on by default. But I recommend you go in and actually do it. And I've did videos on UFW. Uh, you can make changes from the terminal or you can make changes here. 
And just so you guys know, this is uncomplicated firewall, but it's the GUI version. So G-U-F-W firewall. And so with that being said, UFW is in the background uh, and you can interact with UFW from the terminal. So just showing you guys that. And then here on the welcome page, also they have documentation. You can go to the documentation, help, uh, web forms, you know, IRC chat rooms, and you can also contribute to the project. I always recommend people do that, especially since this software is free and open source. And so the people that create it, they do not get paid for the time that they put into these distros. And so in order to keep the project going, they accept contributions, donations, all that good stuff. So contribute if you can. Now let's go down and close it. That kind of covers pretty much everything I wanted to cover on the system. Uh, I was going to show the kernel version, which you guys have already seen that. And overall, this is a solid release from the Linux Mint team. And I definitely, you know, enjoy looking at this distro as well as recommending it to new users of Linux. Okay, so there you have it. Like I said earlier, this is a solid release from the Linux Mint team. And it's clear why Linux Mint re remains a top choice for both newcomers and experienced users alike. And if you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share it with your fellow Linux enthusiasts. And make sure you subscribe to my channel for more Linux tutorials, updates, and exciting content coming your way. As always, I hope you guys have a wonderful day and of course, keep it techie.